Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flickering Myth TV. My name is EJ Marino, and oh boy, the cinemas are dead. Everyone's crying. What are we going to do? Oh, yes, Alan, you're joining me for a conversation. Oh, boy. <laughs> this one's going to be fun. Um... Yes. Um, so, uh, as the headline will say, as I just mentioned, I don't know, it's raining cats and dogs. Christopher Nolan's upset about something else in the cinema <laughs> world today. <laughs> Do you want to bring up the Christopher Nolan-ness of this all? What's happening? I can read the full quote when you, we get to it, but introduce this a little bit. Okay, so... Um, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I spent the last time that we talked about Christopher Nolan defending Christopher for Nolan, and that's not going to happen today. Uh, he has stated that he went on a tirade in a tenant home video uh, press presser about how this Warner uh, HBO Max announcement if you've missed that you guys can see it the, up here I have a link up yeah. here as well but yeah all the 2021 movies coming to HBO Max for 31 days or whatever uh, simultaneous with theater release and he went on this tirade yeah, about sure. how this is this is I don't even know. Oh, uh, you're going to have to read the actual quote because it's it's hard to contextualize. Some of our industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find out they were working for the worst streaming service. Bold claim, Nolan. <laughs> it, incredibly sh awful thing. Like what a bridge to burn <laughs> i mean <laughs> like... katzenberg right now is just like yeah <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes i'm not the worst of the year <laughs> okay, first of all like it, i mean it depends on how you're defining worst streaming service because attachment rate maybe but it, because hbo max is struggling because it's such a flooded market but it is it's legitimately one of the better streaming services it's HBO and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, it has Turner Classic Movies. Nolan, that's the only streaming service that has movies before 1980. Bro, come on. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, got Criterion Collection. Like, it's uh, it's good. Like, it's a good service. It's a struggling service because... It has gone up, though. Market. They said since they did a, a, a poll, since a Wonder Woman's announcement, and since this early announcement of this... It has gone up in downloads and what we were talking about, a lot of people who have HBO Max, maybe I'm talking to you specifically who's watching this, you might not have it activated. You might have an AT&T service, you might have DirecTV. I mean, there's so many ways of getting it, but people are activating it now because of this news. So yes, Christopher yeah. Nolan to say it, hold on, I'm not done with it. Yeah. Warner Brothers has an incredible machine of getting filmmakers work out everywhere, both in theaters and in the home, and they're dismantling it as we speak. They don't understand what they're losing. The decision makes no economic sense, and even the casual Wall Street investor can see the difference between disruption and dysfunction. Reference uh, point they do mention in this Hollywood Reporter uh, thing, he has worked with Warner Brothers since 2002 with insomnia. So yeah. it's not like he's just waking up out of bed and saying, I hate Warner Brothers, though this feeling could be growing. We don't know what happened behind the scenes with Warner Brothers. They keep writing him big-ass checks, so yeah. you can't be too upset with these people. Yeah, he, he did make – his one good point was that apparently uh, the filmmakers and even some of the production companies weren't really consulted, and that is shitty. Yes, yes, yes. That's, yes. that's not good, but – for this man to go on a tirade about this business's decision of saying that it makes no economic sense when this entire idea is born from the fact that your movie flopped is bold. <laughs> like, yeah, I believe around 60 million domestically. And it's still in, that's to this date. It's still in the, I saw somebody comment on, um, a uh, flickering myth Facebook post that was just like, I think if they'd have left the movie in theaters, it could have done better. No, it's been in theaters. Nothing's pushing it out. Yeah, it's yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's worldwide, just for worldwide. reference, uh, it made three hundred and fifty nine point nine million on a two hundred and million dollar wow, budget. Oh, that's uh, not even good. 
going to break even. No, uh, no. It theater. needed about 800 to break even, to be honest. It didn't need to hit the billion dollar mark, which in a perfect world, people would have assumed this would have done. It wouldn't yeah. have. None of Nolan's movies besides the Dark Knight movies have hit a billion. Reference point for you guys. Sorry, you Inception yeah. stands. Wasn't happening. Dunkirk yeah. wasn't happening. Um, yeah. So this didn't need to be a billion dollar film. It needed to hit at least 600 to 800 million. That's with the advertisement. That's with all of the shenanigans that are happening with the movie. He wasn't even close. He made close. 159 yeah. million more than the budget. Yeah. He's production weak. budget. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that, that's not including, that's not including the, the cut that movie theaters get. And that's not including all of his the cut. advertisement that went into and it. And his cut was gnarly, which is one of the big reasons he was pushing it. Basically that all went to Nolan. He yeah. got the front end of the deal, not the back end, which most filmmakers, directors take back end deals, which yeah. basically means after the movie's done, I get 10% of the box office. That's a lot of money, but I get 10% yeah. of the box office or something like that. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. Walked away with, hundreds of millions from the infinity war film so yeah. back-end deals will help you out nolan took a front-end deal where he said all of the money goes to me first then you guys play with your change yeah i also think it's funny he pointed out warner brothers here he specifically mentioned warner brothers not warner media who made the decision not mm. at&t which is just warner media he picked out the production company which I don't think has a big stake in this either. This hurts Warner Brothers just as much. Yeah. If in his eyes, in his eyes, this isn't good for Warner Brothers either. This is a good decision for Warner Media, for HBO Max, for Warner Media in general, because no one's getting paid in theaters. Um, yeah. And sorry, unless you're unless you're paying for everyone's vaccine, everyone's like, well, vaccines are going to be out. I'm like, to the timeline that some of this needs to happen not to this like yeah no not enough for these movies to make money and honestly like <laughs> i think that we have a better chance of some of these of a couple of these movies being seen as a success more so than we would have if they were in theaters i'm looking at you dune because... i'm looking at you mortal Kombat. i'll even say a movie <laughs> i am looking forward to that more yeah. Kombat cast is cool it looks great fine cool it wasn't going to do well. It was a January release. <laughs> we all yeah. know what that means in movies. It's not good. That's yeah. not a good time to release movies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this but, is going to save King James, the movie about Venus and Serena, uh, their father. Uh, this is going to save In the Heights, a fun Lynn Manuel Miranda musical. It wasn't going to have the full theatrical life that they should have. Even yeah. in a normal sense, I will. I will say even Dune in a perfect world where nothing crazy is happening, I don't know if Dune, Dune was old. never going to make the money it needed to make. Never. Now, at least they might be able to delude themselves into people watching that, you know, sticking around because they're still paying for the service and be like, well, this movie came out. And then they'll see a bunch of people watching it and be like, maybe we should finish Dune because otherwise they weren't going to do the second part mm -hmm. because it's, it wasn't going to make money. It wasn't. The, I'm sorry. Is, I love Dune. It yeah. wasn't going to make money. No, I don't. I I have not. I don't love Dune, and I was kind of confident <laughs> it wasn't going to make the money. And I I want every movie to make money, even the movies that I think are garbage. I want this. I want things to do well. Mm -hmm. I don't see it doing well. But also, we you talked about this in the very beginning. Simultaneous releases with theaters and on HBO Max mm -hmm. for 30 days, 31 days, and then it goes back to the theaters full time. Nolan. If you want people to go to the movies, they will go. Though that is on you. That, I mean, that is on the people. If they're choosing then to stay at home, that is on the people then. It mm. is not the studio's fault. It is not anything. They are presenting options. If people choose to stay home, people are going to choose to stay home. Like, yeah, I think we saw that a lot of people chose to stay home when your movie didn't make any money. Granted, it didn't even look that good. But and now um, that it's coming out online, the reception is not glowing praise because I think it came out on some digital, you know, streaming platform. You pay thirty dollars for it, yeah. watch it on Apple or something like that. Yeah. Um, so it's on there. The reception's still not good. This wasn't going to be it. That's why I, I feel like I can't judge the pandemic box office mm -hmm. because it's hard. It was Nolan's movie, New Mutants unhinged with russell crowe 
freaky from Blumhouse. Like, these movies weren't going to be the biggest thing. Wonder Woman uh, coming out this Christmas is going to be a big test. It is coming out in theaters. Mm -hmm. There is more places. Some places are opening up theaters. I mean, I live in Florida, so I live in a hellscape of all times, and everything's (laughs) been open forever. So um, (laughs) so I'm curious to see if Wonder Woman, which I do think is a bigger film than Tenet will ever be, um, it's oh, bigger yeah, than New absolutely. Mutants. Of this course. is a good test. This is something I, I the only people that were going to work is a Fast and the Furious movie, a DC movie, a Jurassic Park movie, or a Marvel movie. Yeah. Those were the it, only ones that had a chance, I think. And none of them have been released for us to <clears throat> experiment. We've thrown out a niche Christopher Nolan movie, a mm-hmm. B, a C, a Z tier Marvel movie <laughs> with New Mutants, and I, I've seen it. I don't hate that movie actually. It's fine. Um, it's a it's a Fox movie. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what you get. But yeah. these aren't good examples, and that's what's frustrating no. me too. Is we've never been able to gauge this correctly. Mm-hmm. So HBO's looking at it, what they have. I I do think that Tenet was probably the perfect uh, the perfect movie to you know test the waters with. Uh, because no, I I don't think there's a world where it would have made, uh, you know, the 800 million it needed, but it probably would have at least done, you know, half a billion, you know, 600 million. Oh, 600 guaranteed. I think that was the the easy, that was the mark the industry was hoping for during the pandemic even. And I'm like, they kept lowering it. They were like 600, 400. Oh yeah, because the reception of it hasn't, and people haven't been trashing it. So, and it's a Nolan movie, and I do think that that comes with uh, a little bit of you know a name to get people in there. Um, you know, now he's not a billion dollar filmmaker outside of Batman, as you said, but it, just based off of his track record and the kind of money he's made before. This should and have Pattinson done. right yes. going right into Batman, which yes. right now Pattinson's going to be hot. So yeah, he had a he had a. I think it had film. things going for it. Yeah. I still don't think it was honestly, and I hate to give them the credit. Mar, I mean, Disney was the only one I really wanted them to test out. Disney yeah. has that fan base that will turn out through thick and thin, through the worst movies they will come out for. I've seen it. I really am curious, and I think Soul is coming out this Christmas as well. I don't know if it's going straight to – I know it's coming to Disney+. Plus. I don't know if it's coming in theaters as well, so I'm, I'm curious to see what Christmas will be like. I just think it's going to be a light holiday season because Thanksgiving yeah. is bad. I mean, th- yeah. their Thanksgiving box office is the worst it's ever been. Like, <laughs> and I um, – I, 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 I don't want to be angry at Nolan for something like this because in his soul of souls, he does want movie theaters to be there. I would like them to be there either. I'm just not going to cry over AMC and Regal. Yeah. They haven't done the and, best. And I just think this is a shitty, dumb take, and he's burning bridges with the company that he's been working with for nearly 20 years by, by them making a decision in a rough time that was mostly informed by the fact that his movie failed Mm -hmm. like and it's again when he when he's like the uh, these people thought that their movies were coming out in theaters they are they are coming out in theaters they're probably going to get longer theatrical runs than they ever would have beforehand and they're just also using it you know he's like as a loss leader for this thing but if you get somebody if you get uh if you get somebody in because they want to see this movie and they pay their $15 to see that movie. That's still, you know, decent, you know, for a family to see that movie, that's decent profit. That's decent uh, exchange on that family's end. And then if they see it and they actually see that, you know, this, there's value in this service and they stick around and they pay $15 month after month after month, that does make financial sense. It does. I'm sorry. Like, and that's not that's not a fifteen dollars that they're splitting with uh, a movie theater. That's fifteen dollars in their pocket. Like, it makes sense. It, it it would not have made sense if the theater market was strong. It yeah. would have been. It would have been absolutely nuts. But he's still acting like the theater market's strong. No. And it, it ain't. And I will go to a point real quick before we start wrapping up that I do think they should have known. I mean, people like Legendary, they own 75, and they put in 75% of movies like 
Godzilla vs. Kong mm -hmm. and Doom. Mm -hmm. They believe that they should have the rights to those movies. You know? You know, Warner Brothers, it wasn't your choice to do it. You don't really own those movies. Now they don't get to cut in Legendary as much because Legendary was trying to sell off uh, Kong versus Godzilla to Netflix. So that's my other issue with them too. Yeah. They wanted to get their own money to sell it to Netflix. It wasn't like they were preserving the theater experience themselves. They wanted to sell that movie to Netflix yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yes, I, I, they, people, Warner Brothers should have known the only ones who really know, because there are celebrities who are mad, because like Gal Gadot has known before she got a deal and a cut for Wonder Woman 1984. So did mm -hmm. Patty Jenkins. There's people like Margot Robbie. Uh, in the report, these cannot be true. Margot Robbie could have said, "I'm a little angry," and now it's you know a report of she wants to burn Warner Brothers down. So yeah, I, I think that there's there's clearly been some uh, poor decisions here, and obviously not everybody was consulted the way they should have been. I'm not saying that. Uh, Warner Media and uh, AT and T are are the good guys in this situation. <laughs> yeah. They really should have gotten their ducks in a row with all of the filmmakers and production companies, and not you know pull the shit move behind everybody's back. But this move in itself does make sense. Yes. No, I I definitely agree, and I think attacking Warner Brothers, who was the the smallest of this equation mm -hmm. <laughs> like they are the baby to what warner media is for nolan to specifically point them out i do think was pointed and wrong i think he was misplaced anger put it at the, again corporations big businesses don't like to yell at big businesses they always like to yell down and that's what mm -hmm. i felt like he did here instead of yelling up at the big corporate monster he yelled at the small production company that's literally warner media can sell them off and won't even bat an eye at it so like yeah. Ugh, uh, it's it's frustrating but it's another nolan take it's he, he someone needed to do it this year last year was scorsese with marvel movies this year it's nolan <laughs> with cinema so uh, one of these old guys need to get riled up for something at least tarantino's quiet <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> him and kevin smith who are the opinionated of the other ones i'm like oh they're quiet yeah, they they don't have much to say. It's cool. It's fun. <laughs> All right, Alan. Thank you for joining me for Thanks getting for some me. frustrating with Nolan. All right, guys. What do you guys feel? Do you feel cinemas are dead? Do you feel Nolan was right? Are you angry at Warner Brothers as well? Let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel. Make sure you guys give us a thumbs up. Alan, thank you again for joining me. That was Thanks, fun. Family.